<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with Orclike from Red Wolf Airsoft. Hi there. Uh, can you tell me much more about your channel, Red Wolf Airsoft? How many teams? Are, how many people are working on your productions, and what it takes to make a video to right. YouTube? Well, that's actually a very interesting question. I think because of the production quality of our videos, people tend to overestimate what we actually have. It's literally, um, I, I create and I write and I do pretty much the films uh, on my own with a camera person, and that camera person does my editing as well, and that's it, it's just the two of us. Occasionally we'll pull in extra staff members, but ultimately it's actually a very small production. And we use what materials we have, we use only free copyright music, we only use what they have lying around the office, which is why you see the same guns and lab coats over and over again, because that's all we've got. Um, and we put out about, we try to aim for about three videos a week, which is kind of a tall order these days, but we, we do our best. At the very least, we have one normally every week. It depends on the scale of the video, of course. Um, over the past year, uh, we've become very busy with new products, so you've noticed perhaps some of the feature-length videos we used to do, not often, we don't do them so often anymore. They're getting shorter and shorter, and we do more reviews now. Um, but it does mean that we get out more reviews to our customers now, making our videos, perhaps the entertainment is slipping a little bit, but they're a lot more informative and streamlined than they used to be, as we gather more experience in our little operation and make it a little more professional. What will the next uh, video about? Off the top of my head, I'm not sure. With the way our video production works, we actually have a meeting at the beginning of the week and decide what we're going to do. Um, as we go through the weeks, we actually make lists of video ideas that we might be able to do. Um, I don't know if you've seen our Red Wolf tactical series. Um, I actually have written basic drafts for about 12 episodes now. Um, we don't know how soon we'll do them all. If they're staggering once a month, um, sometimes two months. So we got one of those on the docket. But if a new product comes up, we'll do one of those. The Inukatsu 1911 will be out soon. So we'll probably do a rapid fire review of one of those. Um, any other products that come up, uh, we'll probably throw in a video if we have time for it. Um, so that, yeah, that's what we're expecting up upcoming. Let's talk about uh, the 2011 future products. Right. Well, that's a kind of a long list. Um, for Red Wolf, of course, um, I don't know off the top of my head what we'll have in advance, but I can tell you what's floating around now. As I said, the Inukatsu 1911 will be out very soon now. One actually crossed my desk right before I became to the show. It's incredible. It's the weight of the real thing. It's, it's not, it's steel, honest to God, steel, and it's incredible. Um, it, they had some teething problems because the recoil spring is very heavy. It cocks like a real 1911. It kicks like a real 1911. It's working fine now, so as soon as we get it up on the website, we expect it to, to keep a lot of people very happy. Um, other than that, I don't know what else is coming out soon, other than what I've seen in the other booths. I know I'm expecting an awful lot of G&G &G AEGs of the coming year. They're releasing new midline sports series with metal bodies, which is a change for G&G. &G. Uh, they're, they're also going to be releasing a new innovative uh, electric blowback engine. The engine is built into the stock of the M16, so it doesn't affect the gearbox at all. It just generates recoil. You can turn it on and off, runs on its own separate battery, so it runs completely independent of the performance of your weapon, and it adds fantastic kick. G&G are also adding uh, an MP5 to their series, as soon as they work out the licensing with that, of course. Um, battery is built into the stock, um, which was always a classic problem with the MP5, how do you fit the battery? In their case, the stock is the battery. Comes with two stocks, it's rechargeable. Uh, which is great. Let's see what else is new. Um, that's all the ones. Oh yes, the Airsoft Smart Control Unit. Um, it's a lesser understood technology by a lot of people. Uh, when we first created it, we made a video, we explained it. It sold so well amongst those who did understand it that we sold out all of them within a month. Um, r rather than restocking new ones as we have, um, Vladimir, who I was just talking to, who is the creator of the Airsoft Smart Control Unit, he's already made a version 2, which will be coming out in about a month or so. Which is, the which is the original smart control unit, but it's smaller, more reliable, has auto cutoffs to prevent short circuit burnout. It has more features. The first smart control unit gave you single, burst, and full auto. The new one does the same, but it's programmable. So you can choose the full set, or just semi and full auto, or just semi and burst, or just semi, or just any combination, about four different options. They're also working on a prototype hop-up chamber, which will allow the unit to connect to it and behave just like a Sistema PTW, the weapon will only fire when it's loaded. It stops when the magazine is empty. Or if you press the bolt catch, and then it will shoot one more shot. Which means it really completes his setup of a pseudo Sistema AEG. Of course, your AEG won't perform like a Sistema, but at least it'll shoot like one, which is a nice step for those of us who can't afford it. 
Um, that about sums up all I can think of in the, in the coming months. Sounds good. What, about, what do you think about the innovative products, for example, the tornado grenade or the motion tracker? What do you think about the performance and how do you feel about them? Well, that's an interesting question. For a long time in Airsoft, we went through a phase of just grinding out M4s, and to some degree that's still the case. But the main feature of Airsoft was always newer players running out, buying an M4, enjoying it, then upgrading it, which was fine for a while. But we're beginning to saturate the market now. Enough people have enough M4s that they want to see something more. They want more innovation, they want more ideas, which is why out of the woodwork we have all these new small type workshop companies producing these elite little pieces of technology. The motion tracker, for example, it's a great little product, but admittedly made by a small company. One, by now, I'm sure most of you understand the motion tracker. It uses GPS technology, and it connects other motion tracker devices to each other, so you can plot friendly movements, which is nice in theory. They even added a rail attach bracket for it, so you can attach it to your gun freehand, which is just cool. Admittedly, user feedback was, well, the map does not reorientate to north. You have to do that yourself, which is annoying which is why now they're working on a new motion tracker. It's a little bit bigger, but they are talking about perhaps giving it a touch screen, but more importantly, it's auto-correcting now. The map will self-rotate to north, which will actually make it useful now. So for those of you who want to go cheap, you can still use the original motion tracker, but for those of you who want to spend a little bit more money, you'll be able to buy the newer, improved one. It was the same with the Airsoft Innovations Grenade. For a long time, in their workshop, they went through different models and designs to find one that worked. But eventually, after much perseverance and hundreds of hours of work and some ingenious engineering, they gave us the Airsoft Innovations Tornado Grenade. And when it hit the market, no one had ever seen anything like it and was fantastically effective. Most grenades up till then had gone in the opposite direction. They wanted a grenade that would perform well, okay, but the idea was to keep the price down because grenades are disposable. But Airsoft Innovation just said, screw that. We'll make a fantastic high quality grenade. And yes, it's expensive. It retails for about 100 US dollars. But it's indestructible. You can throw it off a mountaintop and run a Jeep over it and it will be fine. If you run a tank over it, well, okay, you'll break it. But the point is, it's one of the toughest Airsoft products in existence, let alone grenades. And you can use it again and again and again. The technology, it's ingenious because if you've ever seen the inside of one, it's incredibly simple. There's very little to go wrong. And all of the spare parts that you can lose or break, you can just get more from the company, nice and cheap and easy. And of course, soon after that, we started to have user feedback. Well, the timing system was okay, but it was fiddly. And like any timer grenade, it has limited use. If you pull a pin and throw it into the room and there's a time delay, they have warning, even if it's as short as a second. And timer systems are not perfect, even in real grenades. So when there was a demand for an impact device, Airsoft Innovations were already working on it. And then, soon after, they released their impact grenade, replacing the timer delay with impact. Again, proving that they have their pulse on the community. Of the impact. Well, I've used it a few times in games myself. Yeah, I, I haven't bought one myself yet, but I have friends who have. It's incredible. The timer one is fine too, but I just find that impact device creates a whole new avenue of options. Of course, it's obvious. I could pull the pin and use it to clear a room and enter immediately. That's, that's easy. But because of its impact nature, it means it doesn't have to settle on the ground to go off. I can throw it against the wall and it'll go off. I can throw it against the ceiling and it'll go off. So if there's enemy behind cover and I don't want to lob it behind them, I just throw it at the wall behind them and it, that's enough. You can also use it as a booby trap device. You can balance it on a door handle. I've seen people tying them to strings above doors and all kinds of fancy rigging, but because that system is so reliable, it will only go off after it impacts and it goes off every time, 100% of the time. So there's so, with that reliability, you can do so much with it and you can learn to rely on it so fantastically well. Well, I think by now, Airsoft is well established enough that if you want to learn, if you want to find the answers to your basic questions, the classics I get over and over again, like what gun should I buy first? What's a good pistol? What's a good, what's a good brand? These are valid questions, but all this information is asked so often, it's available online now. There are countless guides online, you just have to Google for them, and people will tell you the basics to brands and what's good to start. What I tend to find, which is why I started Red Wolf Tactical, the series, is the next questions. People asked about Airsoft 101, but then they wouldn't turn up for the next class. Because they go out and they buy their fancy M4, and they buy their nice brand pistol, but then they just stop. And the problem is, like any combat system, your, the soldier isn't about the gun, it's about the whole package. So you have to get the vest and the belt and the sling and the spare magazines. You need to think about, well hang on, you have an M4. 
Should I be using high caps? Should I be using mid caps? What is a mid cap? What benefits do I get out of using mid caps? Crunch the numbers and work it out. If you use a high cap, you get 300 rounds. No, you don't. You get 20, then you have to wind. Then you get 20, then you have to wind. You have to stop to wind more often than you're shooting. If you get mid caps, you just get 10 of them. They're cheap, so if you lose one, whatever. You get 120 rounds. Reload, then another 120. If you actually crunch the math, you get to reload instead of wind, which is much more fun and quicker, and you get to put more firepower on target. See, that's not even that hard to understand. You just need to think about it. I think more newer players just need to sit down and think about things other than guns. If you have a pistol, by all means, choose a nice style, choose a nice jewelage, but think about, well, hang on, how are you going to carry it? You have the nicest gun in the world, but if it's tucked in the belt of your pants, it's just ridiculous. You won't be able to pull it in time. A guy with a really bad pistol, with a nice setup, will draw it and shoot it faster than even the best pistol if it isn't set up properly. Which is exactly why, if you're going to spend time in your pistol, think about the holster. Think about spare magazines. How many do you want to carry? How many do you need? How do you carry them? After you take the empty magazine out, of course, we can't drop them like they do in the real world. So where are you going to put your empty magazine? I've seen countless airsoft players. They have their fancy setups, and then when they go to reload, they spend 10 seconds looking for a pocket to put their spare magazine. All they needed to do is stop and think about it before the game. You know what? If I have a, a magazine holder for two magazines, go ahead and buy a third holder. Have a spare one for the empty one. So now when you cycle, you always have one empty holster. It's as simple as that. Just stop, think about it, do your research, and think about the whole picture. That's the best advice I can give.